All right, so we're outside getting some sun. And I just want to make sure to show you the guys these things so that it's one thing for me to say it and believe it. It's another thing for me to be literally doing it. And by it, I mean sitting in the sun. And it's probably blurry because the screen looks fucking dirty. Let's clean the screen. All right, we're back. So I like to do this in the morning. I've already had my protein shake today. And I would naturally just sit in the sun, drink on the protein shake, and get some sun. That's it's not too complicated. And let your body get heat, let it warm up. If you're going to work or going out, do it before you have to take a shower so that when you start sweating, you can then take a shower after. Um, but I'm gonna do it, eat some food. And then we're going to the gym today is a heavy leg day, I'm sure. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, yeah. Today is a heavy leg day. Every day is gonna be heavy from here on out. And so we're going to do legs, like I said, get some food, show you my salad, drink some water, let that digest. And based on how hungry I am, I may or may not have a shake before the gym because I've been hungry my last couple days in the gym and I don't want to be hungry. That means I don't have as much energy as I need to to power through the workout. So we're gonna play it by ear or by stomach feel. And then we also are receiving a package today and we're ordering creatine. I gotta get one of my buddies some pre-workout, right? I'm not getting pre-workout until phase three, right? Cause I want, I'm just timing, just timing. The serendipity of timing for a lot of things for me. Uh, but I am getting creatine cause it's in stock. It just didn't notify me. It just didn't notify me it was here, but it's here. So I'm gonna get some creatine, sit in the sun, have a salad, and let's get it. Uh, so just an update. I am having another shake. Wasn't hungry, but I am hungry at the gym. So I thought better to be overprepared than underprepared. So shake, walk, and then we'll be in the gym. Oh yeah, make sure you're getting plenty of water in. Uh, because it's crucial and if you're not drinking enough water by the time you go to the gym and you start working out and then you want to drink it's too late because your body needs time to absorb the water it doesn't just go in and you're good it has to be absorbed cells have to drink it muscles have to drink it everything that needs water needs to needs the time to absorb the water so preparation and getting things done before you go to the gym uh, having food prepared before you have to go to work all these things done in advance prevents poor performance proper preparation prevents poor performance so just prepare prepare and be ready all right now we're in the gym i'm at the gym i turn my car into a little sauna before i go into the gym so you'll see me perspiring here sitting in the sun the sunroof's open but the windows are closed and it's a little, definitely warm in here. And I came on here to let you guys know, on a scale of one to 10, I don't want to go to the gym at all. The sun's shining, I feel great, I've done all my work, I've eaten my food, I feel fine. There's nothing logically wrong. They're like, there's no reason why I would have drank enough water, I have energy, like, I've went to the bathroom, nothing's on my, like, I'm perfect. <laughs> but I just don't feel like going. It could be like, I don't know what it is, but, I'm going to go. I just want to let you guys know that it's not perfect in Roy's world. I do this shit all the time, and there's still days I don't want to do this shit. But I want the results so bad, right? And being on day 47, right, of doing a program, this happens. This is a normal feel, and this is, this is what being a personal trainer is about. It's not about just giving you the perfect plan and, and telling you the perfect diet and macros, nutrition, drink water, all that, although, although that stuff is important. It's about walking with you and holding your hand through days like this when you don't feel like going, when you, you're following the plan but your results aren't coming in as fast as you want, when you know life happens and you're just not feeling it. You had to have somebody that you're like, hey man, I know what you're going through. I legitimately understand. However, when we started, we made a commitment as a team to get this done. I made a commitment to you and you made a commitment to me. Uh, and you said that you would just show up. Because what I ask people when we first get started, not to be perfect, not to be great, not to not have flaws, I just ask them to show up. And if you can commit to showing up, showing up, showing up to the check-ins, showing up when you have to take your pictures, showing up to the sessions, showing up when it's time to do Skype calls, showing up every time it's time to show up. If you show up, then everything else will take care of itself. I don't wanna be here. <laughs> we here, okay? I don't want to be here, but if I am giving advice to other people, I got to take my own advice. So show up. So if you don't want to be here, just go to the gym anyway. You want to be here, pull out the app, 
pull out the program and do it anyway because showing up and it's it's easier to not do it when you're at home it's a little bit easier to do it even when you don't do it when you show up at least at least i'm here i don't want to be here but at least i'm here and the, the weight's right here so might as well go ahead and get get it done so my little advice to you guys is just show up just show up don't worry about being perfect don't worry about not making mistakes that shit's inevitable we're going to make mistakes ups downs left and right it's always going to happen and you can follow the plan to a t and be perfect but I mean, sun's out shining and still some of those days you just don't feel like it so moral of the story a little bit pre-motivation and then telling this to you guys too helps me motivate myself i literally feel like doing it more now because i've been talking for three minutes telling you just got to show up anyway and expressing this feeling and getting these thoughts out it's like a therapy session uh like like le dirk said he said he treat the mic like therapy because he talked to it i treat the camera like therapy because i talk to it right and so i just want to be able to relate to you guys and have you relate to me so that you will be more open to the information I have to provide to you. So with that being said, I'm going to take my ass in the gym, foam roll, warm up, and smash legs. I got more than enough food in me. I got creatine on the way. <laughs> Motherfucking Vegan Athlete Series is live and well. So see you inside. All right, so I want to start this video off with a voiceover, and then I'll let the rest of it play. Nah, just with some music over it, but this was a PR for me. I started out with some hip thrusts. I love doing hip thrusts on the Smith machine. I don't have to worry too much about form as far as like controlling the bar. Um, I just have to focus on my actual form, like my body and the workout that I'm doing and how my legs are positioned and how my neck's positioned and stuff like that. So I came over, started with one plate. And then we went up to two plates here. And after doing that one plate, it felt like there was nothing on the bar, right? And just a couple weeks ago, maybe two weeks ago, this was my max, two plates. And so I was doing 12, eight to 12. Started out with 12, I believe, and then worked down until I just did about six. But I just felt good. This was very easy. Two plates were super easy. And so I was like, obviously, we're here to make gains. So I went up. Um, this would be 275 on a regular bar. I'm not sure how much the Smith machine bar is, um, but it's two plates and that's a quarter on the end. So 25 pounds on the end. I did that again and it was pretty easy. And so, of course, we went higher. Here is three plate. Here is three plates. Um, and I just wanted to make sure my feet were flat. I wanted to make sure that I was going slow on the way down and squeezing at the top of the motion just to get the full activation of my glutes. And one good thing about this too is it works the top of your quad, which helps with extending your legs too as well, all the way. And I was always looking for top of quad exercises, and uh, this is one that I found. The top of my quad really needs a little extra work. And so that one felt good too. So what are we doing? If we're not trying to make gains or not lifting heavy, then what are we doing? We must not be trying to make gains. So I came over, did three plates in a corner, and it's just smooth. Just smooth. No lot, not a lot of jerking or knee caving in. Just smooth. This got a little bit heavier, though. You see my face? A little bit heavier. And I felt good. And I'm like, you know what? What are we doing? Like, what are we doing? Like, I can't just leave with three plates in a quarter without trying to put the extra 45 on there. And so that's what I did. I hopped on an extra 45. And boom, one, two. Oh, yeah. Three, four, make sure my feet are flat, my big toe is down, everything's down to the ground, boom. And that, my friends, <laughs> was the start of the rest of the season. All right, so I'm gonna stop here and let the music play, and you guys can watch the next couple of sets, but just know that we're working and, and working on strength from here on out. So we're doing extra sets, and we're doing increasing the reps, and we're getting bigger, faster and stronger by any means necessary all right enjoy the rest of the video
So post-workout, post-workout update from not wanting to go in in the beginning to saying, yo, you gotta do it anyway, fuck how you feel. Results, I had the greatest workout of the entire series just now. 47 days in, not wanting to do it. I had the greatest workout, hands down, bar none, the strongest, lifted the heaviest, have the most energy, form was great, endorphins firing, songs, like playlist was on point, the shuffle playlist was on point. The best workout of the entire series happened on a day where I didn't feel like going to the gym. Let that sink in while we go get some food. <laughs> okay, so check this out. Sometimes I, uh, I make videos and I don't push the record button. At least I think that's what happens because I'm sure I made a full video of me eating a salad. But maybe not. I don't know. I could just be drunk and high at the same time. Anyways, so this is what we had. I had a big ass salad when I came back from work, from working out. And there were no shake. I didn't have a shake or anything like that because uh, I've had two shakes today already. And I was just really hungry. So I had a really big salad. And so I know I was talking about going three, four, five salads a day so I don't hurt, ruin my stomach. But if I just eat slower, make sure I drink enough water, take my glutamine, I'm fine with those bigger salads. So I'm actually going to stick to it. And I'll just eat the two big salads. And if I need to add more... Then that, then I'll add like a medium sized bowl. But right now they're really big salads. As long as I'm not starving, overeating, binging, mixing food, combining fruits and, and, and cooked foods and all these things, then I'll be good, right? If I just slowly eat the food, if I chew my food, you gotta make sure you chew your food too. Uh, make sure to not drink water while you're eating your food. These are all things to, it's like, how do you gain weight? How do you become overweight? You drink while you eat. You don't chew your food. You don't drink enough water, and so you're really, really thirsty, and so you just overcompensate with a lot of food. These are the ways that you get overweight. And so, as long as I drink water, eat slow, chew my food, I'm good. And so this is what I had, salad-wise. It was so glorious. I love having all my uh, groceries and not running out of corn or walnuts midway through the week. Uh, so I got arugula, but I also got baby spinach and baby kale at the bottom. Now what you do, and I'll show you guys this tomorrow, you mix the oils in the dressing and you toss the leaves and let them wilt for a little bit. You let them get soggy, you let them sit there. Not too soggy, but you let them break down naturally, right? And that's going to create a really nice flavor, really nice texture to the greens. And they won't be so coarse, the kale won't be so tough to eat. After you do that, I had some cooked beans. Now, I have to have beans, things like peas, things like green beans. These are high-protein vegetables, right? And protein is important. But no matter what diet you're on, but especially the vegan diet, you have to make sure that you get an adequate amount of protein. Now, how much protein is a different story. I'm not even counting. I'm just making sure I get enough macros in, and I'm making sure that the macros are balanced with proteins, fats, and carbs. And then if I need to eat more food, I'll increase all of it, protein, fats, and carbs. So I'm not really, I'm not counting macros at all. I did before when I first started, but not at all. I had mixed beans, I had walnuts, I had raisins, corn, quinoa, peas, red onion, salt, pepper, cayenne. I use avocado oil. Like I said, I do not like the taste of olive oil. It's like almost spicy. It's like disgusting. So... Olive oil is good, it's healthy, but I don't like it. So I use avocado oil, smooth, you don't taste the oil, you just, it's just for like the texture. You don't taste the oil whatsoever, uh, but you get some good fats in. I like grapeseed oil for the same effect. There's no taste to it. I don't like oily tasting things like, like, ugh. So that's what I had, salt, pepper, cayenne. I use light raspberry vinaigrette. I use some sesame ginger dressing, and this stuff is so good, guys. Like, the beans are the addition this week, uh, I love those cooked beans. We cook them overnight for about seven hours slow. And like I said, beans are crucial because protein is important. No matter what, protein is important. Amino acids are important. And I've been taking a lot of glutamine. Glutamine is scientifically proven to improve your gut health, which is mandatory if you're looking to 
eat more food, increase the volume, work out, you gotta have good gut health, or your transition and process of your body transformation will 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 be inefficient. It'll be very inefficient. And so I think glutamine is very it's great for recovery as well, for muscle recovery. Uh, I heard something in a podcast today saying that glutamine is reduced by 25%. Your blood glutamine levels are reduced by 25% up to 40%. And that's a lot of depletion. And it's based on how hard you work out or post-workout, you can be low in glutamine. And glutamine is the most abundant amino acid in the human body. And so it has a lot of functions, a lot of roles, a lot of repairing, repairing the gut lining, repairing the muscle tissue, repairing cells. They're important, that amino acid. And so I make sure to take that. So you guys can look into it. I have all the links of the things that I use in the description. Um, but yeah, that's what I had, y'all. Um, we are definitely getting bigger. That leg workout today was brutal. I didn't even do, I did my warm up. I didn't even do hip abductors or adductors, nothing like that. No, no extensions, no hamstring curls. Just using my warm up after my initial warm up. That's like my pre workout warm up with weights. I didn't do that because just there was people on the machines that I was trying to use, and so I'm not gonna, I'm not the guy to really wait around unless I need that machine. I can go do that workout on like six other different machines because I'm versatile. So I started out with heavy hip thrusts, as you guys saw, and I went up to four plates. And holy fuck. I'm not scared of working out. I'm not scared of the weight. I'm not scared of the challenge. I'm just dealing with injuries. Like I was dealing with popping and clicking and I'll put a video up soon of what I made like two years ago. I just was like down. I'm like, damn, what am I, why am I going through this? Why am I experiencing these pains? Why am I experiencing like these things happening? And so for the last two years, I've been on the search. Like, is it sugar? Is it my diet? Is it food? Is it exercise? Is it nutrition? Is it like, why am I hurting? Why are my joints hurting? Why is my sleep poor? Why am I irritable? Like, why is all of this happening? And so for the last two years, I've been figuring that out. And I've been working on a kinetic chain. I've been working on the entire human movement system and using the OPT model. And I've, I'm now comfortable lifting heavy weight. <laughs> and man, if you haven't seen me like this before, just be ready. Because as long as I feel comfortable, as long as I feel good, I don't feel like I'm going to injure myself. I don't feel like I'm compensating. <laughs> Man, this is the most progress I've made in a in a in like a a regimen, and I'm excited. So I don't want to talk too long. It's already seven minutes. I really wanted to get that off my chest. So that's it, y'all. Thank you for watching. We're gonna be up. We're gonna gain some weight this week. By the end of phase two, I'm thinking like 202 pounds. Like we're not going back under 200 pounds. I'm lifting. The creatine is in transit. The creatine is in transit. The creatine is important. We're talking about glutamine today. We'll talk about creatine probably next week when it gets here. Um, and do some super nutrients of the week. So, thank you for watching. I'm done talking. I appreciate you. If you guys watch it to the end and you sit here and listen to me talk and you get value. You're like, yeah, this Roy, this Roy guy knows what he's talking about. Or if, I don't know. At least you go look look it up. Go Google it. Be skeptical. But then look it up. He said glutamine helps with muscle recovery. And it's the most abundant amino acid. Let me look. Google or Alexa, what's the most abundant amino acid in the human body? Let's see if Alexa knows. Alexa, what is the most abundant amino acid in the human body? Here's something I found from the article Glutamine on Wikipedia. Glutamine is the most abundant naturally occurring, non-essential amino acid in the human body, and one of the few amino acids that can directly cross the blood-brain barrier. It, only thing is, she said non-essential. I believe it is essential. I don't believe we can create it, but I could be wrong. So we're going to end on that. I'm going to go do my research, have some more information for you guys tomorrow, and I will see you in the morning. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. We're dropping videos every single day on the Big Athlete Series. Uh, ask me what questions you want to know in the comments below so I can tailor those videos, pump out as much content as possible. This is what I do, this is my job, this is like my life. I make content to help people transform their bodies, get healthier, live a better life. And so, ask questions, I'm here to help. All right, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.